Hey y'all, it's Paula, Hillbilly Orchids. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm getting into um, the Zygopetalum Care Collab with um, all the listed um, participants that I'll put up on the screen. Um, I will list them up there so you can see there's quite a few of us um, doing the, uh, the Care Collab this time. And I'll tell you the honest truth, um, I'm relatively new to zygopetalums. Um, so my knowledge is not that that great on them. Um, I only have four. Or I only have five. Wait a minute. Wait, hold the phone. <laughs> I almost forgot. This little guy. Um, Mia. I meant to do this earlier, wipe him off. I uh, almost forgot this one. Um, this was a little seedling um, that Michael McCarthy gave me. Um, I just watered today, so, um, yeah, so I apologize about that. So I have five actually <clears throat> um zygopetalums now <laughs> get with the program paula <laughs> okay um now i did i had one more but it did die on me um zygopetalums are um they are notorious um hard to deal with fussy, blankety blank blank blanks. <laughs> um, and that's why I said, really, you know, I wasn't really going to get into them. Uh, but Michael McCarthy, um, last, um, I think it was over the summer last year, um, he actually, um, on Roger, uh, Roger's Orchid's um, Facebook page, um, he actually started talking to everybody about Zygos. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, zygopetalums, you, you, they have to be in cold or cool temperatures, you know, uh, they're hard to keep, they're fussy, um, you know, you can't, uh, every time you repot them, they die. Well, there's reasons behind all of that. And honestly, these guys are all grown in my hot, um, grow room. They, they... They get, um, you know, they stay at 70 in the wintertime uh, Fahrenheit, and uh, it goes as high as 90 sometimes in here in the summertime. So, they don't ever get really cool. Um, like I said, I don't ever let them drop. I try. 68's been, like, the least. 68 degrees Fahrenheit has been the least I've ever let these guys drop. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, um, Michael did, um, he did a big write-up um, on Roger's Facebook, and um, Roger actually uh, kept the, the, the paragraph that Michael wrote and um, he downloaded it to the files in the group so that anybody could go there at any time that's a part of his Facebook page and access those files. But I'll basically give them to you right here in a nutshell. Now, um, and like I said, I give... I give Michael all the glory as to why these guys here are still alive. I really do. Um, because, <laughs> because me and these guys, you can't treat them like you do your regular orchids, okay? You can't, you know, you can't treat them like a cat leia. Um, you know, like I, I'm so bad about, I get a plant in and nine times out of ten, I want to right now get it repotted get it all that stuff get it in my stuff you know i i, I jump in you know I, I don't i don't play around and let them sit in the old media too long well <laughs> um i forget which one i think it was the um green gecko when i got it in i told michael i was like oh man i'm gonna i'm gonna repot that thing it is nasty um he's like I'm telling you, don't do it. And I'm like, why? Why? I'm like, it's it's horrible. He's like, you got to wait on that new growth. And I'm like, 
Oh, yes. Yeah, see, I would have killed that plant had I jumped and went ahead to my way of thinking and repotted that plant. Zygopetalums are... They're not, they're not really fussy. They're not. I mean, some can be kind of, but if you wait for that new growth to pop up and get, um, I forget what he said. I think he said like centimeters. I usually wait till they're like a couple inches before I go ahead and repot. And I never do it any other time. I will not repot as I go if it does not have a new growth coming. Never. Um because that is where you wind up messing up because you definitely need to wait and make sure you have a new growth coming so that shortly after that growth gets so big then it's going to start new roots so then that way you're going to have if something happens at your old roots dump you're going to have new ones to fall back on from that new growth okay so you're there's always a certain point in time that you repot these guys never jump ahead never jump the gun and say well I'm doing it anyways and if you come to a point where you know you just kind of got to but you got to always know that you're going in with that risk that hey I might really screw this up because I have to do it but you know it, it kind of is what it is if you're in a serious enough situation that you have to, to repot but um, like I said these guys these guys are growing in my hot grow room. I do not keep them in the cooler part of my house. Um, and the other thing that I like to like kind of warn you about is is um, watching how big they get. Because if and 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 I don't like their growth pattern. <laughs> if you look at them, they are a sporadic plants. I mean, like Jumping Jack is not even fully on the screen because he's so big and he's so out there um they're really kind of wild so if you don't like that really wild kind of plant then a zygo is not for you um but uh, i might rehome that zygo <laughs> that's a jumping jack um he's so big and i'm not sure honestly if green goku is going to get big or um this is uh like so the one that michael gifted me this is uh makai um mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not sure how big they get, but I do, this one is a small one. This is, um, Zygo Microfilm. Now, it get it stays small, and it's got two new growths on it right now. But, um, basically, to jumping back to what he said in his, um, description was, is he said that, um, he has found in his experience that Zygopetalums do best in, in three different types of media moss, packed sphagnum moss, packed coconut husk, or coconut choir. Now, I I don't like coconut choir. I just don't. That's my thing. That's something on me. Michael has grown some, and he, I think, I believe he has some in coconut choir um, that he is, you know, perfectly fine with. He can, he can do that. I'm not that fond of coconut choir. Mine are all in coconut husk, except for the Mackay, and um, it is actually in moss, and that is only because he fought me to do it. <laughs> I, I really wanted to put it in um, coconut husk because I recently had to repot this one because it was in a smaller pot, and for some reason, she jumped up and decided to form her bulb up here and put roots out so there's about like this much of her buried in that because I don't know why but she had a very good root system um, but like Michael said it's only a one sprout seedling so until it decides it's going to actually put out another um, lead I would leave it in moss so, but that's what I said. I, I went ahead. He had, he sent his to me in packed moss and, um, oyster shell. And I went ahead and put it back in that, hoping that maybe that will help keep in my environment because moss just does not do well in my environment. I overwater it. Me and him's talked about that. I try not to, but I, I just can't 
seem to judge that I'm getting moss too wet. I don't know why. I don't know why I can't get it right. <laughs> but I always do. I always overwater. But, um, anyway, so the other ones are all in coconut husk. They're in a um, husk. I think actually pure husk. Uh, Jumpin' Jack might have some, I think I see a little bit of popcorn perlite in it back there, but, um, and it's actually sort of in semi-hydro. Um, I have um, a wick to her, so, um, because it's got such big bulbs and it drinks so much, so, and it seems to be doing pretty well that way. This one did actually bloom for me. It's been the only one, or no, this one, the uh, microfilm came in bloom. So, uh, but the other ones haven't bloomed or anything for me. But I have pictures of those two. I'll insert them so you can see them. Um, but basically, that's how you can deal with zygopetalums is, is uh, you know, just kind of go by that rule of thumb. Um you know, only use, I mean, and like he said, it's not that I'm saying that you can't grow them in bark, because some you can. Some will adapt, and some will grow good. Um, you know, this isn't 100%, you know, I'm not saying, oh, just do it like this, you know. it. Some people it can work for. Most, you know, it, the, it needs the husk material to keep it moist, um, because you don't really want to let these guys dry, dry out. Um, they like to keep moist, and that's another thing. Um, so basically with these guys, you know, like I said, it doesn't matter about the warmth or the, the coolness. Um, mine do just as fine in here in the warm gray room as they would in a cooler place. I think actually probably mine wouldn't do as good in a cool place, but that's, that's just kind of my personal opinion. Um, but, um... You know, they just, um, they like moisture. They like, uh, that's why I keep them in the coconut husk. They like bright, indirect light. Um, well, not real bright. Like, they don't like Cattleya type light. It's more like Oncidium type. Um, they, I put mine right under the Barina Grow lights, and they love it. Um, you know, so basically that's all. Um, you know, they don't, these guys really haven't, fussed with me much um michael actually me and him got the um zygonesia here uh Sinosia, dove of peace me and him both got one of these um at the same time and his actually bloomed and i'm like oh you lucky duck um so my new growth on her ain't ain't showing no signs of no buds yet so you can see right here um this one is the newest growth on her for right now um, but you see how I mean they're really long I do love this one because it's variegated but um, they're so sporadic I mean I find myself catching these on other plants and knocking them over as I go to moving them around um, they're not space saver plants they're really not um, but I mean they have beautiful flowers there's no doubt about that and um, I was over the moon when, uh, and, and I stumbled onto the flower that Jumpin' Jack put out. Um, but, um, this one, I would really like to see this one bloom. Green Gecko, Cheyenne Marie Green Gecko. This one's a really pretty one. Um, it's kind of a yellow one, but, um, you know, they're doing really good. They just got, just got watered today, so that's why... They're still really wet, but I mean, you can see, you can see they love the husk. I mean, undoubtedly. Now, this one does have a, I did put a little bit of perlite in it. But you do, like I said, when you start noticing these dry out, you, you wet them back down. You water them back down. Um, I feed mine as well. I feed them the, uh, the Jack's two-part fertilizer the same as I do everybody else. They get the same amount. Um, <clears throat> this one I struggled with a little bit at first. Um, it came and didn't have really good roots, and then it, um, this growth died. So I was really afraid that it wasn't going to do anything, and then these guys popped up. And I was like, whew, because this is a, this is an adorable, adorable little plant. Now, I really do like this one because it's miniature. 
um, but and the blooms are just like the size of your thumbnail they're just they're really cute too um, like I said I'll insert pictures for y'all to see um, this one here um, like I said I don't know I can see if I can find pictures of them or I can ask Michael maybe if he has happens to have one that has bloomed for him um, but I mean it's even it's actually done really well since I've up you know repotted it I was really nervous about burying it but so far it's done good but you can't I don't think you can see any roots yet coming along in it I mean I literally there's one right there but um, I literally just did this in uh, December 14th so there's one down there it's kind of hard to see but um, it, she really hasn't had time to there's a nice one with a nice root tip so she seems to be seems to be taken to the uh, potting and like I said the only reason I did that was because you see her roots was coming out like that so I wanted to, to definitely go ahead and get her on the move um, now see that's that's how I decided to do that one since it didn't have a new growth but it was putting out roots so that's why I went ahead and decided it was time to go ahead and, and jump in there and get her going but uh, I'll have to take you off the tripod and look a little closer at Jumping Jack like I said she's so big um, she actually starts over here off the screen and goes all the way back through there and goes back she's actually in the back of my um, um, shelving unit over there but that newest growth right there is the one that bloomed this year. So, um, so far, I haven't seen any new growths or anything on her as of yet. Um, but these are some big, big old bulbs. She gets so big. She's such a big girl. But um, <clears throat> I will see. Um, I'll also see. I'll ask Michael. Um, you know, I might be able to, to maybe link to his... Um, a lot of you guys are on Roger's Facebook, but um, like I said, and basically I went over pretty much so what he said in there, but like I said, I, I hands down owe my zygos to Michael. Um, I, I couldn't grow these on my own. Um, and like I said, they're not, they're sort of like, they're a little bit of a learning curve, how like catacetums are a little bit of a learning curve. Um, catacetums aren't like Catleas or Oncidiums. They have a special way about them that you have to learn to do. Um, so Zygos are kind of in that same same ballpark too. Um, you know, like I said, if you don't if you don't just jump in there, you know, um, like I said, I'm so headstrong that I was just ready to repot, you know, just because that's what I do. And um, you know, in this case with Zygos, it's not the way to go. Um, basically the overall thing is, is like I said keep them warm um, and, and if you've noticed uh, pretty much so uh, each and every one of them has blemishes on their leaves it's almost like an oncidium you can't keep a zygo clean almost every zygo I've ever seen has had some kind of blemishes um, the new growths come out looking really nice and then all of a sudden BAM and I really don't know why my oncidiums do the same thing so <laughs> Um, I don't know if that's something I'm doing wrong or, you know, I think I asked Michael about it one time. Um, I'm like, is that because I grow them warm? And he's like, nope. So, um, it, it just, just like on Sidiums, it must be a thing. Um, you just, they get little blemishes on them and that's just that. Um, but like I said, basically, you know, the, the media is important, um, they are grown these guys are grown in my what I call treated husk the treated husk with the um, uh, soaked in cow mag solution husk um, they are kept in the warm grow room they are kept moist at all times they are never let dry completely out I mean they're kept moist not soaking wet just moist um, I, like I said I kind of wish this would have been maybe tomorrow because you or I could show you tomorrow, maybe put an insert in 
and show you like how much of that dries up because like I said these all just got watered today um, I just got done watering them not more than about three hours ago so some are still a little moist but um, yeah definitely keep them moist keep them use coconut husk or use sphagnum moss or you know if you if you feel like trying it try the cocoa coir um, you know those three things he said seems to be the best media that he's found so far I've only had success with the moss and the coconut husk um, I mean, like I said and I feed them straight what I feed everybody else they get 150 to 200 parts per million uh, Jack's two-part fertilizer and as you can see I mean they, they seem to be growing and doing quite well so but um, I hope uh, I hope y'all learned something out of this um, hopefully uh, you know you guys if you don't have a zygo um, you know get one try it you know um, and if you kind of go from there and you know give it six months or so and then try another one um, you know if that one's doing good try it keep trying um, you'll find they're not as hard as you think um, you know give them what they want and you know give give them what they want treat them like they need to be treated and they'll reward you for it so um, but with that said uh, that's about it for now um, please go check out the other people's channels because everybody grows them differently and I'm sure somebody's got them in bloom um, I really wished I'd had a bloom uh, so far I'm batting zero on blooms for care collabs um, but you know maybe one of these days I'll hit it lucky but uh, with that said uh, bye for now y'all till we meet again